Mabuhay! Buhay pa ba? your Mrs. Frugalicious in today's new series called The Liberated Libra. Woohoo! This is a new series in the Brainism category of this channel where we dissect relevant topics in this world using the mindset of a Libra where both sides are seen and heard and I tell you where I stand. This new series is going to be based heavily on my opinion. That's right, not factual. If you want heavily researched material, just watch like National Geographic or something. So just keep that in mind that this series is about my opinion. So take everything with a grain of salt, like a salt grain as big as a Himalayan lamp. <laughs> so today's video is about my reactions and opinions on Philippine election results. You know, I posted two videos campaigning for my candidate on my Facebook page, not here on my YouTube channel, because I did not want inflammatory topics topics like religion or politics to drive away my beloved subscribers, my f-bombshells, because these topics are very divisive. It can create a gap between us and I could easily get cancelled simply by not supporting your candidate. So I'm going to take that risk, my beloved f-bombshells, and I'm going to post it here. At Tapang atao si Carlota. Wow. Please don't unsubscribe if we don't share the same political views. <laughs> I am makakampink if it's not obvious. If you are easily triggered by kakampink content, then just skip this video. Don't judge the entirety of my being because I am not just who my candidate is. We are all more than just who we support. And we are not less because of who we support either. And that's what I want to talk about right away. You know the elections? really divided us and turned us into actual monsters. Like, Stranger Things had nothing on us. Like, the Stranger Things monsters were so well-behaved compared to us Filipinos during the elections. The elections, especially seen through the lens of social media, really brought out the most close-minded, disrespectful, judgmental, intolerant, and foul versions of ourselves. Even my friends, I could not recognize who they were already through their posts. And I could not believe that they were unfriending each other violently. I want you to see the other side, whatever side you are on, in a different light. It is time to stop calling the other side, whatever side it is, stupid, Walang pinag-aralan, mangmang, pobre, lutang, lugaw, mahirap, dukha. Because on both sides, on opposite sides, I have best friends who are highly educated, high achieving, intellectual, successful, and wealthy on both sides. We cannot generalize that on the opposite side, walang kwenta dahil puro bobo ang bumoto sa kanila. Because that is not the case. I realized in this election that IQ levels are not the things that drive people to their decisions or choices. Knowledge is different from choice. Parang skydiving lang yan and bungee jumping. Ang sabi ng critical thinking or ng knowledge ay pwedeng mapigtas ang tali niyan. Ay! Pwedeng hindi gumana ang parachute niyan. Ako ay mamamatay. Sabi naman ng puso at ng decision making, ang saya-saya! Tara na! Woo! So makaiba ang critical thinking and decision making. Don't be surprised or mad if people voted for the candidate that they benefited from or they think they will benefit from. It is not only natural but it actually also sounds logical, right? To vote for the candidate that we think we will prosper in. I mean, nobody's playing the hero here. We are all just looking out for ourselves. There are those families who support a certain dynasty or a candidate because they are cronies. There are those who supported a candidate because they received actual lagay or vote buying. And so that is actual benefit. And there are those who are related to the candidate. And there are those who work for the candidate. These are not the best mentalities to make that voting decision, but it's totally understandable and completely human. And as was revealed in the news, BBM had the highest campaign expenses. So that means a lot more people benefited whether those funds went directly to individuals or people or to suppliers or whatever else was paid for for the campaign. The recipients were people. And again, it is not an ideal mindset. It is not an ideal way to make decisions, but it is completely human and totally understandable. 
Kung ako ay Colgate user talaga, pero ang lumapit sa akin para magpa-endorse ay close up. Dahil napansin nila na napakaputi ng ngipin ko. Wow. Ano sa tingin niyo sasabihin ko? <laughs> Hindi ko kailangan ng 300,000 pesos mo close up. Only Colgate touches my yellow teeth. Hindi ko si close up? Aba, syempre hindi. Sasabihin ko sa sarili ko at kung sino man ang gusto makinig, mas mura ang close-up kesa sa Colgate at nakakalinis rin naman ang ngipin yan. At sumusuporta sila sa local artists kagaya ni Gino Padilla. The closer I get to touching you. Walang ganyan si Colgate. Gets you ba? Lahat ng bagay pwede natin i-justify sa ating utak. Kahit beam pa yan or happy, basta hindi sisirain ang ngipin ko at gagawing mas lalong dilaw. So kung si BBM or si Lenny or kung sino mang candidate yan ang naging close up sa kanila, nag-alaga sa kanila, nakinabang sila ang kanilang pamilya at nagpakita ng magandang buhay sa kanila, syempre doon sila aalyado. Hindi natin sila masisisi, kaya tama na ang sisihan. Sa sitwasyong ito, mas madaming nakinabang, makikinabang, or inakalang makikinabang kay BBM kesa kay Lenny. Inakalang makikinabang dahil sa nangyaring misinformation at disinformation. Magkaiba pala yung dalawang yon. Yung misinformation ay wrong information or misleading information. Parang ay nagkamali. Ang disinformation naman ay deliberately deceptive information. Ay, ginawang mali. Yun ang disinformation, ang pagkakaintindi ko. The disinformation and the history revisionism was successful because it was six years in the making. It was successful because our country has a large youth population that did not experience martial law 50 years ago. And even if they did experience martial law, let's face it, the same event does not bring about the same experience. We are in the same storm, but we are not all riding the same boats. Some of us are riding a cruise ship. Some of us are riding a luxury yacht. Some of us are riding a bangka. Some of us are in a floating door. Good for two. But it's only good for one if you are rich and your name is Rose. In short, we have different experiences of the same event. Remember Yolanda and Ondoy? How many of us here in Manila were so happy nung walang pasok nung Yolanda and Ondoy? Well, we were so happy dahil malamig yung panahon. We were able to have bonding moments with the family. We watched a movie. We were sipping hot chocolate and sopas. On the other hand, 610 people or 710 people died during Ondoy and 6,000 people died during Yolanda. I'm sorry, it got dark. Same event, but it brought enjoyment to others and to the unfortunate others, it brought death and destruction. Just like COVID, to people who lost their livelihood and their loved ones, COVID was an absolute tragedy. But to telecommunication companies, tech companies, new online sellers, it was a time of prosperity. Just like in martial law times, some people remember just the prosperity part. And the tragedy that did happen was effectively wiped away by the disinformation and the history revisionism. And this is where I have an issue. I acknowledge that not everyone will experience the negative side of tragic events. For the most part, I didn't drink Ondoy and Yolanda. And for COVID, my experience was not 100% tragic. It was actually like split in half. I did lose my job because all hotels and casinos were closed for years. But I had an alternate livelihood, which was live streaming. During COVID, my husband was hired. My immediate family and friends were safe and not hungry. And I was able to reconnect with so many friends during that time. I enjoyed the slowdown of work, but I will never forget the tragic side of it. I am fully aware that it was tragedy of the highest kind to others. I, I could not and will not forget what others have gone through. The tragedy was not lost on me even if I only experienced a fraction of it. So to all my beloved BBMs, let's just not forget the tragic part of martial law. I understand that you didn't experience it. I understand that it was not a factor in your decision making. But let's just not deny its existence. To deny it is to dishonor and disrespect those lives lost and their grieving families. And to deny it is to live willfully in ignorance. And to deny it is to be a willful victim 
of scamming. It's understandable that you did not experience the negativity of martial law, but it's not justifiable to deny it. Speaking of scamming, yes, the disinformation and the history revisionism was used during the elections, but I am not mad or angry at the people who fell for it or who believed it. Let's not blame the victims of the scam. And I know that's hard to do. I mean, have you watched Tinder Swindler on Netflix? Kulang na lang, kutusan ko yung TV screen sa sobrang inis ko sa mga babae. Pero mali, alam ko hindi dapat ganon ang reaction natin. Anybody can fall victim to a scam no matter what the IQ level is. And being a scam victim myself, <laughs> nahulog na rin ako sa maling akala at tinipe ko ang account password ko sa isang video email thinking that it was a legitimate link and goodbye 50,000. Nabiktima na rin ako at na-scam ng isang lalaking nagpapanggap na walang asawa. If gusto nyo makimarites about that scam, click this video here. Gigil! Nagigil ako sa sarili ko nung na-scam ako. Boba-boba mo! Siyong na-siyong mo! Yan ba ang UP graduate? Ang daling mabudol! Pero hindi dapat ganon. Huwag victim blaming. Ang totoong dapat mahiya, managutan, at habulin ay yung kriminal at ang scammer. Huwag niyong sisihin ang mga biktima kahit masarap kaming kutusan. Paano naman yung ibang mga bumoto na hindi naman na-scam, hindi naman naniwala sa disinformation, hindi naman nakinabang direct or indirectly sa kanilang mga kandidato, paano naman tayo nagkaiba? Tingin ko, ang pinakaiba natin ay ang standards or ang criteria for judging. Yung standards ko or criteria for judging ko, yung pinaka-priority ko, number one, is yung hindi korap. Non-negotiable ko yan nung pagpili ng kandidato. Parang nung nagjo-jowa ako, nung single pa ako. Ang non-negotiable ko nun is pagiging faithful. Pangalawa is yung pagiging masipag. So, kung babaero ka, natamad, bagsak na sa akin. Kayo ba? Ano ba yung naging criteria nyo or yung standards nyo? Kung paano kayo nag-decide kung sino ipoboto nyo? So, kung sa akin, number one kung priority is yung hindi ko rap, yung iba sa inyo, ang priority is Gusto magandang kurso na natapos or eskwela. Yung iba sa inyo gusto karismatiko. Yung iba sa inyo gusto makajos Yung iba sa inyo gusto magaling magsalita. Yung iba gusto mukhang matapang. Yung iba gusto yung madami ng experience o madami ng proyekto, madami na nagawa. Merong mga iba gusto yung mga pogi at literal na artista. Wow. So, iba-iba ang naging standards. And lahat naman, pwera yung kapugian ay valid. Since... Poverty and corruption. Ang pinakamalaking problema natin dito sa Pilipinas, umasa ako na non-negotiable din sa kapwa ko Pilipino ang pagiging hindi korap. Sa bagay, posible rin naman na priority nila ang hindi korap. Iba lang ang tinitingnan natin mga ebidensya. Sana lang, next elections, mga kapwa ko, taasan natin yung standards. Sana i-consider din natin na may magandang educational background. Alam ko, education is not the end-all and be-all to be successful. A lot of billionaires have proven that. Pero kasi since kakaiba yun, natatabunan naman yung fact na mas madaming CEO na nakapagtapos kesa dun sa mga rare few ng mga bilyonaryo na hindi nakapagtapos. Personally, I value education not because of the diploma or the bragging rights of a branded school, but because education gave me the most rigid training of my entire life. Pinakanahirapan ako sa buong buhay ko is during my schooling. Ngayon, habang nag-work, may choice ka na eh. Kung hindi mo gusto yung trabaho mo, lilipat ka. Pero pag nasa school ka, talagang sisipagin mo dahil mahirap yung lipat ng lipat dahil madedelay yung pag-graduate mo. And talagang sa school, may mental gymnastics na nagaganap sa iyong utak. Pwersado ka mag-isip kahit ayaw mo, otherwise hindi ka papasa. Pwersado ka magkaroon ng time management. Pwersado ka magkaroon ng discipline. So, napakalaki ng respeto ko sa mga taong nakapagtapos. Siyempre, mas mataas pa ang respeto ko sa mga taong mas mataas pa ang natapos at sa mas mahirap pa na school na napuntahan. Hindi lang dahil sa palabok o palamuti ito. Dahil ito ay katunayan, katibayan at ebidensya na itong taong ito ay dumaan ng ilang taon ng pagdurusa, marunong magsakripisyo, may mental strength and ability, at may willpower. Yung mga trabaho na entry level, college graduate nga ang hinihingi, di ba? Siya ay tatayo bilang presidente ng isang bansa, hindi ng isang kumpanya. Kung ang presidente nga ng isang kumpanya ay dapat graduate, lalo pa 
ang buong bansa. Ang eleksyon or paghalal ng isang presidente ay para siyang malaking gamble, para siyang isang malaking sugal. We are making intelligent guesses about what the future president might achieve for us. Napakadami ko pang gusto sabihin, mga F-bomb shells, pero alam ko, naubos ko na ang mga maladilis niyong mga attention span. To summarize, I guess ang topic ko talaga sa video na ito ay unity. <laughs> Ironic na galing sa isang kakampi na ang conclusion ay unity. Sige, kahit simulan lang natin sa tolerance and respect. Basta wag lang tayo magsisihan na. Let's all behave with dignity and humanity and not monstrosity, okay? The point of this Liberated Libra series is for you to see the opposite side, the other side. And so I don't want you to see each other as enemies. We all had our reasons for choosing the way we did. Hopefully, we learned valuable lessons of what to do and what not to do in the next elections. And the reality of life is, there will come a point where you will just have to accept that you will agree to disagree. It doesn't just apply to elections, it applies in relationships. My beloved Kakampinks, we lost the battle, but not the war. My beloved Filipinos, the war is on poverty and corruption, and nobody has won that war yet. We are still deep in that war, and going against each other is just gonna keep feeding that war. Beloved Kakampinks, Let's give a chance to their battle cry of unity by not putting them down because of their choice anymore. Give them acceptance and respect. And on the other hand, beloved BBMs, join hands with the Kakampinks. We are doing something great to help win this war. The Angat Buhay NGO is a tool to help win this war. And it doesn't matter if it was somebody else's idea, if it's another candidate's project, as long as it's going to help us win this war, let's all join hands. Imagine what we can do if we can stop the noise and we can finally hear each other and understand each other and forget about candidates, parties, and differences. Nobody wants poverty. Majority don't want corruption. Only corrupt people want corruption to reign and remain. Those are the true enemy, not each other. In this channel, moving forward, I will no longer differentiate between a kakamping or a BBM. You are all my beloved F bombshells, and I'm your mommy bombshell. Aww. Thank you for watching this Liberated Libra series. I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. I accept all thoughts, even if it's not the same as mine. You are free and welcome to voice out your opinions in the comment section so that we can learn from each other. Launch, keep it respectful and classy because that is what we are here. F bombshells are classy while being frugalicious. Mabuhay tayo mga Pilipino, and I will see you next time on another episode of the liberated Libra. So today's video is about my f kakam Salamat sa pag... Salamat sa pag... Not in the groove, man. I'm just not in the groove today. Tag ako ng tag sa kanila. Napuputpud na daliri ko. Kakame. Daliri. Daliri. You know, I posted two videos on my Facebook and this airplane is just gonna ruin my groove even more. Whew.